guys, Tom here, and welcome to a new video. And today, I'm doing my first WWE TLC 2013 match prediction video. This is a commentary of my thoughts and my predictions of this match between Dolph Ziggler and Fandango in the kickoff show match. I'm predicting every single match, of every single pay-per-view. I always predict every single match on the match card. We're starting with the kickoff show this time between Dolph Ziggler and Fandango. And I'm going to predict exactly who I think is winning in this match and why. I think they are winning. So for me, I definitely, definitely, definitely see Dolph Ziggler picking up the victory in this TLC 2013 kickoff show match. And the only reason why I do think Dolph Ziggler is winning is because they always, always, always give the face the wins on the kickoff show matches because you want to leave fans happy and want to buy the pay-per-view. The whole reason why they create the kickoff show is to make you want to buy the show. That's why they get some, some really, really big legends on the panel. They want you guys to be interested in the show. They want you to listen to the legends, but also the actual match they have, they want the baby face to win because the baby face basically leaves a good taste in your mouth. The fans are like, yes, my my my, my favorite one, the baby face one, the likable character one, it leaves a good taste in your mouth and you're more likely to actually buy the pay-per-view because one of your favorites won on the kickoff show. So it's a good sign for fingers to come on the pay-per-view and make sure you want to buy it. They rarely, rarely, rarely give the win to the heel. The last time they gave the win to the heel was Miz at the last pay-per-view, but that was the only because they were making him turn heel, so they needed to give him the momentum. But in this match, Fandango definitely does not need the momentum in this match. I'd much rather give it to Dolph Ziggler. He had the World Heavyweight Championship, and they decided to give it away from Dolph Ziggler because he said some bad words about Triple H, but they definitely should be giving the win to Dolph Ziggler here, simply because he is the babyface, but also he is definitely should be within a push for 2014. So for me, Dolph Ziggler definitely winning this match. He's the babyface. He definitely needs to push more. They haven't really used Fandango at all since he made his debut. He's slowly, slowly, slowly gone from a decent mid-card superstar right back down to a jobber. He's definitely not winning here, guys. He's not within a push for the next few months. It's definitely Dolph Ziggler who should hopefully have a good 2014. So for me, Dolph Ziggler's winning. What do you guys think? Hopefully you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching and goodbye. Alright guys, Tom here and welcome to a new video and today I'm doing my prediction for the WWE TLC 2013 Insert Continental Championship match between Big E Langson against Damian Sandow. Remember to subscribe and then you can get predictions of every single match on the TLC 2013 pay-per-view. Remember to follow me on Twitter because I'll be live tweeting throughout the whole show and today we are predicting the match between Big E Langson versus Damian Sandow. This is a voice commentary and I I'll be commentating on my thoughts, who I think is going to win and why I think they are winning. I'm also going to say why I don't think the other competitor is going to win. So for me, I definitely, definitely, definitely see Big E Langston retaining his Intercontinental Championship at the TLC 2013 pay-per-view. Now, they decided to turn Big E Langston face. They didn't think he was getting much of a reaction as he, he slowly died as a heel. Less people were interested in the character. And they decided to turn him face, give him a swap of gimmick, and really turn it up and get fans behind him. And the face turn has really, really worked. Fans are finally starting to buy into his gimmick. He gets a huge, huge crowd reaction when he comes out. And the face turn was very, very successful. The next step for the push was to give him the Intercontinental Championship. He knocked off Curtis Axel on a Monday Night Raw to win that Intercontinental Championship. And then he defended it for the first time at the, at the Survivor Series 2013 pay-per-view successfully. And he is still the Intercontinental Champion. He's still within this push. He's still the Intercontinental Champion and he's definitely retaining on Sunday with that title. They basically just threw Damien Sandow into this match. I mean, if you think about it, the match that he won to get into this match was against the throwaway match against Dolph Ziggler. Now, Dolph Ziggler and Damien Sandow had numerous matches on the last few Monday Night Raws and they finally decided to make their match on last week on Monday Night Raw a number one contendership for the Intercontinental Championship. They pretty much needed a, a match to add to this TLC 2013 pay-per-view. So they're like, why don't we just make another Ziggler and Damian Sandow match and make it a number one contendership for the Intercontinental Championship? It's pretty much just to create one more match on the pay-per-view and this could easily be a huge filler match on the TLC 2013 pay-per-view. The fact that they just simply made a number one contendership match with two throwaway superstars like Dolph Ziggler and Damian Sandow who really didn't really have any reason to have a shot at the Intercontinental Championship and they simply gave the win to Damian Sandow 
Sandow just proves how much they care about this match. They have no care whatsoever about this match. Biggie Langton is definitely retaining his title here. Damien Sandow fails to cash in his World Heavyweight Championship Money in the Bank briefcase. And if Biggie Langston, who's getting this huge push at the moment after being given the title, was to lose to Damien Sandow, who really hasn't been built up very well in the last few months, it would bury Biggie Langston a lot. So for me, Biggie Langston is definitely, definitely winning this match. They didn't really think a lot about building this match up whatsoever. There's been hardly any build whatsoever whatsoever. Damien Sandow was pretty much thrown into this match just to create one more match on the pay-per-view and make Biggie Langston defend his title on the pay-per-view. Biggie Langston isn't ready to give up that title. He should... Um He'll probably have it all the way until WrestleMania 30, in my opinion. He's still within this push. He's still having this push. And obviously, Damien Sandow is not the man to knock off the belt from Big E Langston. He hasn't been built up properly. And honestly, it's not his time to hold the championship at this current time, considering he really has been buried in the last few months. So in my opinion, Big E Langston is winning this match. What do you guys think? Thanks for watching. Hopefully, you have enjoyed the video. And goodbye. Alright guys, Tom here and welcome to a new video and today I'm doing my prediction for the Divas Championship match of the WWE TLC 2013 pay-per-view and it is between AJ Lee against Natalia, of course, for the Divas Championship. Now I'm going to predict who I think is going to win in this match and I do think it is going to be Natalia. and I think we, I'm going to predict that we're going to have a new Divas Champion at the end of this match and I actually think this is definitely, definitely happening happening because the problem they have in the WWE or the Divas division is they built up AJ Lee so well they don't have any any Diva on the locker room that comes close whatsoever to AJ Lee so this has really really created a very very stale Divas division and the, ch the chance that they tried to create the total Divas versus the real Divas just really really didn't work because they didn't have any prominent Divas to work with and it really just made AJ Lee come out on top every single time. The thing they want to do here is give the win to Natalia because it can really, really further both careers in a very, very good way. Because if you have somebody who's representing Total Divas as the Divas champion, really, really puts over the Total Divas show very, very well. Because obviously, the person who's the champion in the Divas division isn't on the Total Divas show, then it kind of makes the Total Divas look very, very weak and not really that relevant to the WWE, even though the show is about WWE Divas. That's one of the reasons why you want to have one of the people on the Total Divas show actually be the Divas champion. They could also add this into the Total Divas show, so implement the T Divas division into the actual Divas Total Divas show, so they can have people in the actual show chasing after this. They can also implement AJ Lee into the actual show, and they can also create numerous matches after Natalya's defeated AJ Lee for the title. They can create some really, really good segments building up to the, the match after this match, so that when they possibly go at Royal Rumble, where AJ Lee faces Natalia for the title again, they could really, really create a very, very well-built feud. Now, building up to this feud, it's actually been built very, very well. They've made fans believe that Natalia is actually going to win in this match because every single match Natalia has had in the last few weeks, she has come out on top and AJ Lee has come out on bottom. Either this is by a sharpshooter by Natalia or simply pushing AJ Lee over. And in my honest opinion, I think they're actually going to give the win to Natalia. They definitely need to create more top Divas in the Divas division. It's only really AJ Lee at the moment. And everybody knows Natalia's a really, really good talent. Now, if she wants to cement this, she should be the one that wins the Divas title on Sunday. And she brings the Divas division forward. It's also a face so you can add her into the Tower Divas show. And it'd be so many good to represent the Total Divas having the Divas Championship and somebody to represent the Divas Division. Also, I think we're quite bored of AJ Lee becoming... And being the Divas Champion, I think ever since she won it in June, I think a lot of people have gotten bored of seeing her the Divas Champion. Considering there's not really been any real challenger at pay-per-views, I think Natalia's only the first person I actually think she's actually going to win. And honestly, if you give the, still give the championship to AJ Lee, it's going to make the Divas Division even more staler. Because honestly, Natalia's the only real only person I can see knocking off AJ Lee for that championship in the coming months. And in my honest opinion, this should be the time where they give the Divas Championship 
championship to Natalia, as she's really the only person I see doing it, so you should definitely give it to her at TLC, because I don't really see any point of her having this match at TLC if she's not going to win this match. It'd be great if somebody from the Total Divas show had the championship, closed the year as the Divas champion, and obviously they've stopped this the Total Divas show, now it stops, and they're actually going to bring it back when the series uh, restarts, so obviously they could use this in the Total Divas show, and obviously we're all really bored of AJ Lee as being the champion, no real other champions being built up properly, except Natalia, me leads me to believe that WWE are really, really going to go with this Divas champion as being Natalia, so in my opinion, I see Natalia winning. What do you guys think? Hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching and goodbye. Alright guys, Tommy, and welcome to a new video. Today, I'm doing my prediction for the Daniel Bryan versus the whole of the Wyatt family in a three-on-one handicap match at the TLC 2013 pay-per-view. In this video, I'm actually going to predict who I think is going to win in this match. And I'm going to straight up say, I see the Wyatt family winning in this match. There's a few reasons why I do see the Wyatt family winning rather than the babyface Daniel Bryan winning in this match. And I'm going to say exactly why I think this is going to happen all in this video. So sit tight and enjoy the video. Remember to like the video as well and comment your predictions on who you think is going to win this match because I can still see Daniel Bryan winning. I can still see WWE giving the win to Daniel Bryan but I do think all the, all, all, all the, all the things go towards the Wyatt family of them winning in this match rather than Daniel Bryan but there's always a possibility WWE could still give the win to Daniel Bryan. So why do I think the Wyatt family are winning in this match considering Daniel Bryan is so over he's apparently possibly having a chance at winning the Royal Rumble and going on to Wrestlemania 20, 30 to possibly have a match against CM Punk or John Cena for the unified title there's some big plans for Daniel Bryan next year so surely they should be building this guy up but also you've got to consider the Wyatt family who at the last pay-per-view did in fact suffer a big loss to CM Punk and Daniel Bryan I did in fact predict in that video that I thought the Wyatt family were definitely winning in this match because it was actually Eric Rowan and Luke Harper's debut at a pay-per-view. So I was like, well, they surely should win because it should put them over well. They need to make a good start at pay-per-views. So surely you should have them win here so they can gain some momentum and build on top of that. But they didn't win then. So for me, I think given the, the win to Daniel Bryan in that match, they should definitely give the win to the Wyatt family in this match because they definitely suffered a lack of momentum after losing in that match. Considering that the Wyatt family were doing all the talking in that feud and the fact that they went to the match the most important in fact about that feud, the actual match and they lost, it made them look very, very weak. That's one of the reasons why they should win in this match, because they look so weak at that pay-per-view, especially in the fact that they've got even more of the favour in this match, the fact that they've got three on one they should win this match or they're going to look very, very weak considering they're a heel gimmick and they're, they're supposed to be feared by the locker room and if they're going to lose against Daniel Bryan <coughs> who's at a one-on-three disadvantage, they're going to look even more weak. And the fact that they lost at the last pay-per-view and they lose here, they're going to look even more weak. I thought they looked very, very weak that they lost at the last pay-per-view, considering it was their debut match at a pay-per-view, then they should definitely win here to gain some momentum, considering they lost a lot at the last pay-per-view when they lost. The also, the other reason why I think Daniel Bryan isn't winning here is because Daniel Bryan's gimmick is that he fights back. He's against all odds and he has to fight back against people. Now, it wouldn't really make sense if Daniel Bryan was to win here, uh, where he was supposed to win against three people, considering the last few months he's hardly even managed to take over Triple H and Randy Orton. The whole idea behind that was he's against it. He's the smallest man. He cannot manage to take on two people such as Randy Orton and Triple H. So it just wouldn't make sense for Daniel Bryan being able to overcome the odds and manage to win against three other people in one match. It just wouldn't be possible for him to do that and it just wouldn't make sense. Another reason would be to put over Kane's character quite well. Considering when he actually came in and he made his debut as the new corporate Kane, he hasn't really done a lot. The only thing he's actually done is stand there when a segment has ended on Monday Night Raw. The only two other things he's done is create this match and the CM Punk match at TLC. And the only reason he did this was to actually have his, his own back against both Daniel Bryan and CM Punk because he didn't really like what they were doing and they were standing up for themselves. So surely if you want to make Kane relevant and you actually want to make him feel like he's actually in control and can actually do things and actually have his own way, you should have the Wyatt family win here because it makes Kane actually look relevant because he actually, they he, they basically did what he wanted to do. He wants the Wyatt family to, to come out on top over Daniel Bryan. He wants the Shield to come out on top over CM Punk. So surely you should have the Wyatt family win here so it makes Kane look very, very relevant considering it, basically what he set out to do 
do with their own Daniel Bryan in this match. And that, if White Family are going to win, that would put him over quite well because he's actually done what he set out to do, which was to own Daniel Bryan because what he did. So for me, all favours going towards White, the Wyatt Family. Now, the only reason why I can see they would give the win to Daniel Bryan is because they're trying to build this guy up for a good 2014. But considering he's ridiculously over at the moment, they were chanting Daniel Bryan on the last segment of Raw and SmackDown this week. They should actually give the fa win, win to the Wyatt family because this will make the Daniel Bryan even more over with the crowd and in my opinion they can't really go much further but considering his gimmick is a weak character and he is supposed to overcome the odds then it would just make no sense if he was actually able to overcome three people in an almost impossible situation you should also give the momentum to the Wyatt family considering they haven't really had a lot of relevant matches at pay-per-views recently the last match they actually lost at Survivor Series and the last few matches with Bray Wyatt against Kane and Kofi Kingston haven't really meant a lot because Kane isn't even that character anymore so in my opinion, they should give the win to the Wyatt family. They need the momentum a lot, lot more. And it just makes sense for the Wyatt family to win. So that's my prediction, guys. Hope you enjoyed the video and goodbye. Alright guys, Tommy, and welcome to a new video. And today I'm doing my prediction for the CM Punk versus the whole of the Shield faction in a three-on-one handicap match at the TLC 2013 pay-per-view. In this match, all three members of the Shield, Dean Ambrose, Seth Rollins, and Roman Reigns, will go up against CM Punk in a pay-per-view match on Sunday at TLC 2013. In this video, I'm going to be predicting who I think is actually going to win in this match. I know a lot of people are actually looking forward to this match because honestly, there isn't really much of a reason to have CM Punk on this pay-per-view. I mean... The attack was never really explained by the Shield. I mean, Roman Reigns pretty much just hit a spear out of nowhere. It wasn't, it just doesn't really feel like a proper feud. It just feels like uh, possibly a filler match, but there's actually more to it, I think. I mean, it, it just doesn't feel like a proper feud. There wasn't really a reason by the behind the attack. The build towards it has pretty much been non-existent. I think it was just pretty much the spear uh, about two weeks ago. And from then on, the, the, the build has just been pretty much average for any kind of match you have at a pay-per-view. The build's been pretty much a mid-card kind of build. There's not really been any whatsoever, and the match has really been made out of nothing. But there's actually more to it. I mean, if you think about CM Punk, he doesn't need this match. He's already really, really over with the crowd. He got a surprising win at the last pay-per-view against the Wyatt family. I think ever since the SummerSlam, he's had a win on every single pay-per-view. He defeated the like of Heyman and Curtis Axel. He defeated Ryback and then Ryback again. And then he went and defeated the Wyatt family at Survivor Series with the help of Daniel Bryan. So really, CM Punk doesn't really need to be on this pay-per-view. He's already over. So the fact that he's just been thrown into this pointless feud, which has had no build whatsoever, doesn't really make a lot of sense to be honest I mean it proves to me that there's a little bit of thing going on here that they want to do at the pay-per-view I mean the fact that the match doesn't really mean a lot whatsoever and it could quite easily be a filler match there's a little bit of a thing hiding underneath the plans for this match and honestly I think the shield are breaking up in this match considering this match has really no point whatsoever they must be doing something with the shield in this match to one make it interesting but also to the whole reason why they've made this match is they must be doing something with the shield I can't think of any other reason why they'd made this match unless they want to do something with the shield because honestly CM Punk doesn't belong in this match they could easily have given anybody the spot against the shield and they were like well who's a main eventer who doesn't have a match Oh, CM Punk. They pretty much only chose CM Punk. It's just a really, really random pick. They have no relationship whatsoever. And honestly, it's going to be a good match. We've had proof of this thanks to the Monday Night Raw matches they've had last week and this week. But honestly, CM Punk has no relationship with the Shield whatsoever, which proves that they're... CM Punk's not really going to do any job here. It's pretty much going to be all down to the Shield play playing a story in this match. And honestly, there was a huge hint on Monday Night Raw that they will be breaking up maybe on Sunday or in the near future. Basically, Dean Ambrose was saying who the nominees were. He was also announcing who won. 
on the actual uh, one of the awards they were doing and basically a couple of times Roman Reigns and Dean Ambrose spoke over the top of each other and at once Roman Reigns actually announced the winner when Dean Ambrose was about to say it so honestly there's a bit of friction going on there between Dean Ambrose and Roman Reigns and really it's been going on for quite a long time and I've actually been really really enjoying it because apart from this week on Monday Night Raw it's been really really subtle and you've had to have a good eye on the camera to realize that they're actually teasing at a breakdown between Roman Reigns and Dean Ambrose. A couple of times Dean Ambrose has actually said he's the best in the shield and Roman Reigns is so egotistical he doesn't actually like this and there was a huge 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 hint on Monday Night Raw when Dean Ambrose said when it was like basically that they were announcing the double cross award they were like we're the shield. We're the most dominant force. We would never do this. It was such a big hint and honestly I'm not sure if this is actually going to happen on TLC. I think that the fact that the, the hint was so huge makes you lead him to believe, I'm going to buy the pay-per-view. I want to see what happens to the Shield at, at their match. That's why the hint was so big. But do I think that they're actually going to break down at the TLC pay-per-view? I'm not particularly sure. But what I think is going to happen is it's going to lead on to further things within the next few weeks for the breakdown of the Shield possibly lead to a Royal Rumble match. But honestly, I don't think they're actually going to break down at the pay-per-view. But I'm definitely thinking and there's going to be some kind of mistake here which actually makes CM Punk overcome an absolutely impossible task in the pay-per-view to win in their match. Now, what I actually think the likely thing would happen is that Roman Reigns, considering they've actually been shoving down the spear, down our throats a lot recently, that he'll probably go for the spear on Dean Ambrose and he hits the spear. Sorry, he'll probably go for the spear on CM Punk. <coughs> CM Punk will easily dodge out the way and Roman Reigns will either spear Dean Ambrose, which is possible, or the Dark Horse, Seth Rollins. Now, Seth Rollins hasn't actually been used in this tension between Dean Ambrose and Roman Reigns, obviously. So for me, I'd actually be quite shocked if Seth Rollins was the one that was accidentally turned on by Roman Reigns. Obviously, it's an accident by Roman Reigns, but honestly, a lot of people are thinking that they're going to turn Roman Reigns' face, so surely he should be the one that does the mistake, and obviously, Seth Rollins or Dean Ambrose can be the one to blame, uh, blame it on Roman Reigns basically doing what was wrong there. And then from that, CM Punk will probably get a roll-up pin on Dean Ambrose or Seth Rollins, thanks to the spear by Roman Reigns, and get the victory. And that really cost the Shield the victory. They could easily blame it on somebody like Roman Reigns, or it could be entirely different. They could obviously do something like a disqualification where... One of the members are like, I don't think we can do this. I don't think we've got the, the men or the power to take on CM Punk in this match. And one of them can just whip out a chair and hit CM Punk. And then one of them be like, why did you do that? We don't need a chair. Or it could come down to do a distraction. Like Roman Reigns shouts Dean Ambrose like, here, I need your help over here or something. He gets distracted, turns around and CM Punk gives him a GTS. Anything like that can happen. Obviously, something like a mistake or an accident is probably going to what's going to happen here. I don't think it's going to be somebody actually turning on them. I think it might possibly just be a mistake rather than an in intentional thing. And then D CM Punk picks up the victory. That's what I think is going to happen here. I don't actually think the actual break breakdown is going to happen here but it could be probably a hint of signs to come that the shield are breaking down i don't think they're actually going to do it at tlc i think that the hint was way too obvious for them to actually do it at TLC for them somebody to turn on somebody. I don't think they're going to do that. I think they're probably just going to tease at it and maybe let it go away for a little bit and then bring it up maybe at Royal Rumble or WrestleMania time. Something like that. Maybe Elimination Chamber or something like that. But I don't think they're actually doing it at TLC. I think the hint was way too obvious for them to do it at TLC for them just to... I mean, it, it would probably be the biggest swerve in 2013 bar the Triple H pedigree for them to give a huge hint there on Monday Night Raw and then for them just to for somebody to turn on one of the Shield members, I think it'd be way too obvious. So maybe just a slight hint that they are breaking down, maybe by a, an accidental spear on one of the members or a, or a distraction or something like that is likely to happen. But I do think CM Punk's winning here, guys. I don't think the Shield actually need the victory considering they are actually breaking down. I think storyline-wise would be the best bet would be probably to make one of the members accidentally cost a victory and get CM Punk the victory. And the fact that they're actually going to be building CM Punk up for a possible match against Triple H at WrestleMania, and he may actually be possibly winning the Royal Rumble, then surely you should give them momentum here to CM Punk, gain some good, decent momentum for the build towards WrestleMania, and hopefully go on to bigger and better things. So that's my opinion, guys. Hopefully you have, in fact, enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. CM Punk is actually winning here, I think. Thanks for watching. What do you guys think? Subscribe, like the video, and goodbye.
Alright guys, Tom here and welcome to a new video and today I'm doing my prediction, the last in fact TLC 2013 prediction on my channel and this is the match between Randy Orton against John Cena for the Unified WWE Championship. It's going to be absolutely insane. I'm so, 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 so pumped for this match so in my opinion, I really think you should get down in that comment section and post your predictions. Who is winning this match? Like the comments in the comment section if you think Randy or John Cena is winning. It's going to be absolutely insane. They built this match so, so well that honestly, there's no momentum whatsoever for either John Cena or Randy Orton. If you watch Friday Night Smackdown this week, the, the momentum shifts doesn't actually shift to Randy Orton, but there's some momentum given to Randy Orton because Triple H says that he'll do what's best for Randy Orton. And on Monday Night Raw, John Cena didn't really gain momentum, but he was standing tall over Randy Orton. Now, I think one of the things that they did really, really clever towards this match is they haven't given anybody momentum in this match. So when you go into the TLC 2013 pay-per-view and you're looking through, maybe going to ring up your, your cable television, thinking about ordering it, you're going to be like, I want to freaking see this match because I have no idea who's winning. I've got to order this. It's going to be, what, 30, 40 minutes of an amazing main event, eight years in the making. I have no idea who's going to win because I've not been hinted whatsoever who's winning and I've struggled so hard to think who is going to win this match. They built it so well, no momentum shifts to either Randy Orton or John Cena. So when you're buying that pay-per-view, you're like, holy shit, I have no idea who's going to win. I'm definitely buying this pay-per-view. That's why I am really, really struggling to wonder who's actually going to win this match. I do actually have a fair idea that Super Cena is in fact winning this match. But first things first, I want to get off my chest that a lot of people have been tweeting me on Twitter. Do you think Triple H is winning in this match? Do you think he's going to climb the ladder and grab both of the belts and be the unified champions? No way in hell, guys. How many times have we had a screw job in the last few months on pay-per-views? How many times have we had a funny ending or not a clean ending to a pay-per-view? I mean, it slightly happened at SummerSlam. It happened in United Champions where there was a quick pin. It happens at Battlegrounds where Big Show basically came in and KO punched everybody. We hated that moment. It happened at Hell in a Cell where Shawn Michaels switched in music Daniel Bryan and was screwed from the WWE Championship. Now, it didn't necessarily happen at... Oh, actually, it did happen at Survivor Series, sorry, but it wasn't between Daniel Bryan. It was, in fact, when Big, basically what happened was... Triple H's music came on and then Big Show got distracted and got RKO'd. So, basically, since SummerSlam... All the way up to Survivor Series, basically all the way up to this pay-per-view at TLC, we've had a weird or screw job ending, which really hasn't left any confidence whatsoever in WWE fans. We're sat here thinking, why am I still watching this product? And especially, why am I still buying these pay-per-views when every single match I'm going to have something which is a screw job ending, I'm not getting a clean victory. Why should I buy a pay-per-view? They should be building out... They sh the thing that they did wrong about this is, this is the biggest match of uh, probably 2013. It's the biggest match of 2013. What they should have done towards this pay-per-view, it should have been building people's confidence in buying pay-per-views so that when it comes to TLC and you're ordering that pay-per-view, you should be like, well, uh, why, why, would, why would we get a non-clean victory? We haven't had any in, like, what, years? I mean, the, considering we've had so many unclean w endings to pay-per-views, what's, what's going to lead you to believe that we're not going to get one here in the biggest match of WWE in 2013? They should have built your confidence in thinking that that's not going to happen. But there's so many people thinking that it's going to happen. But honestly, I do not see that, that happening. The reason I don't see that happening is because you've got two very, very big pay-per-views in the next few months. Royal Rumble and WrestleMania 30. And they should really start the TLC 2013 pay-per-view building your confidence in wanting to buy these two pay-per-views. I mean, WrestleMania 30, it's the 30th anniversary of WrestleMania. And also, of course, Royal Rumble. The road to WrestleMania starts at Royal Rumble, so they should start building your confidence into buying these pay-per-views at the TLC 2013 pay-per-view. And the only way they're going to do that is by giving you a clean victory. No way in hell are they going to give that to Triple H. No way in hell is Triple H helping Randy Orton or John Cena in this match. I cannot see it whatsoever. They would be so damn stupid to do this. They should be building your confidence in wanting to buy the next few pay-per-views because they are big pay-per-views. They know people come in to watch WrestleMania 30. They know fans all over the world want to buy WrestleMania 30, whether they're not even WWE fans. They should be building your confidence and want you to be confident when buying 
behind that pay-per-view that you're going to get a good ending. You're going to get a good few matches. You're not going to get screwed over with your favorite superstar like Daniel Bryan. They should start this pay-per-view with probably the biggest match of 2013 with a clean ending. So that leaves it up to, is Randy Orton or John Cena winning? And honestly, John Cena is winning this match, guys. This is my prediction. I think John Cena is winning this match. There is so many reasons why I think John Cena is winning, and there's hardly any reason whatsoever why I see the heel Randy Orton winning. Number one, Randy Orton's a heel. He's a very good heel, but considering you're leading up to WrestleMania 30 and doing all this goddamn promotion, and you've got, well, definitely with the Unified Championship, you're only now going to have one champion. You're not going to have one or you're not going to have two world champions. You've got one. So you want the face to be the champion leading up to WrestleMania 30. He's going to be the one that's going into all these TV shows advertising WrestleMania 30. He's the top dog. He's the guy with the one world title. If you've got Randy Orton doing all these promotions, if you've got Randy Orton on the face of magazines advertising WrestleMania 30, He's a bad guy. You're not supposed to like him. It's not going to work having him the unified champion in this big time of WWE with WrestleMania 30 around the corner. Why would he do the promotions? He's not a good guy. It doesn't fit with his character. So why would you give the unified championship to Randy Orton when he's probably not going to be doing these because he's a bad guy? Doesn't fit with the character. And obviously, we all know that Randy Orton's got a bad attitude. You know John Cena's good for business. You know, he works his heart out for the company outside the WWE. So in this biggest time of WWE, of WrestleMania 30, you've got to have John Cena the champion. He's going to be doing all the promoting. He's the guy. And if you have him the unified champion, it cements himself as the guy. And he can do all this promotion. But obviously, that's not the only reason. John Cena has arguably had one of his best years in the WWE. He won the Royal Rumble. For the second time in his career. He won the WWE Championship in the main event of WrestleMania against the greatest of all time, arguably, The Rock. He returned from an elbow injury, which is supposed to be out for four to six months, and won the World Heavyweight Championship. He put over Daniel Bryan so well at SummerSlam in one of the matches of the year. It was so well built. John Cena's had such a good year. You need to give the titles to this fucking guy. If you're going to give it to Randy Orton, who has such had such a stale year... He had squash matches against the likes of what? It were, It was Big Show Extreme Rules. He had a squash match against Big Show at Survivor Series. He had a random match against The Shield in the first match of the WrestleMania card. He had a pointless match against The Shield at the Elimination Chamber match. He didn't really do anything at the Royal Rumble. This guy has not had a good year. And if you want to bring the one champion back and give it to a guy like Randy Orton... It's not going to give that championship any prestige whatsoever because this guy, Randy Orton, has really done nothing in 2013. He turned heel because he did hardly anything as a face. And ever since he's become a heel, yes, he's been better. But honestly, he's had a very, very poor 2013. And honestly, what else you've got to talk about is the promo that John Cena did on Monday Night Raw, where he absolutely went ham on Randy Orton. He talked about how he's been handed his career on a plate. He's talked about how Triple H carried him. He's talked about how Randy Orton has pretty much won the WWE Championship thanks to other people helping. Why would you give a championship to somebody like Randy Orton? This championship is supposed to be the best championship you will ever hold in your career. Why would you give it to Randy Orton when John Cena cut that amazing promo basically talking down at Randy Orton, squashing him, boring Randy Orton about how he's been handed it on to a plate. Now, why would you give it to somebody like Randy Orton, who basically, the promo from John Cena basically said he doesn't deserve to be in the WWE. So why would you give that championship to somebody who doesn't deserve to be in the WWE? Why would you cut that promo on Randy Orton when he doesn't deserve to be in the WWE? It just wouldn't make sense to give it to Randy Orton when he doesn't deserve to be in the WWE because John Cena said so you've also got to consider that John Cena is always being given championships I mean obviously it's all about the PG era and people love to see John Cena apparently and he is so over with the crowd he is just the most electric guy in the WWE we have ever seen he's arguably the face of the WWE without a championship and people pay to see John Cena especially less than 13 year olds so that's another reason to give it to John Cena they just shove us, us him down our throats so it just keeping with the trend of the last 10 years you wouldn't put it past him to put the belt on John Cena I'm really struggling to think of any positives to give it to Randy Orton considering he's been so buried this week considering <coughs> 
considering he's had a really, really poor 2013, considering he's a heel, he's actually been in the title picture since SummerSlam, we want to see somebody new, we want to see a new WWE champion, he's been there for about, what, four, four, a couple, like, four months, I think it was, since SummerSlam, so he's been in the WWE Championship scene for a hell of a long time, we've seen him for, for the last four months being the WWE Championship scene, and we don't just want to see Randy Orson in there, we want to see the likes of CM Punk, Daniel Bryan, Sheamus, you know, we want to see guys like that in the W Championship scene. So one way to get Randy Orton out there, considering he's been in there for four months, <coughs> the first stage would be to make him drop out of that title picture. So John Cena should win here. That's my prediction, guys. What do you guys think? I think John Cena's going to win here. And they're going to have a rematch at the D Royal Rumble 2013. What do you guys think? Hopefully you have in fact enjoyed this video. My prediction is John Cena winning. Thanks for watching guys. Hopefully you have enjoyed the video. And goodbye.